Hello and welcome to the Internet of Retail. My name is Doug Drinkwater. I'm the editor of Internet of Business. I'm lucky today to be joined by Robin Duke Woolley, the CEO of Beach and Research. Good day, uh, Robin. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Very good today. Very Fantastic. good today. Yeah, it's a great day. So, Robin and his team have been doing a lot of um, in the M2M and IoT space for quite some time. Really, before the IoT trend uh, picked up as it has in the last couple of years. Um, Robin, what's your take right now on, on the Internet of Things more broadly across the different sectors, including retail, but also healthcare, manufacturing and insurance? Clearly it's very early days, but we are starting to see those end user case studies come to the fore, and we are meeting those end users as well. Um, what do you make of this as a trend right now? It's obviously clearly a long way to go, but what's your take on it? Sure, well, so we've been looking at the uh, end to end market and more recently what's called the IoT market now for uh, about 15 years. So uh, it's been a long time coming, and uh, it's, uh, it, it, it sort of comes and goes, comes and goes. And um, as some of the companies that we've been working with have grown from very small to actually quite large now. So it is quite a substantial market, in fact. But uh, I think that uh, the uh, move towards IoT, people calling it IoT as opposed to end to end, has brought it to the awareness of a much wider audience now. And that we've got uh, many more suppliers, technology suppliers, very large ones uh, involved now uh, in the market and looking to see how much of a future they can have in this market as well. So I think that it's reached a new sort of level of uh, awareness. And uh, that's also been reflected by more awareness among users, so the adopter community, uh, enterprises, uh, and how they use the technologies, and uh, how they uh, use it for the benefit of their businesses. So I think it's moved a long way, but yes, you're right, that uh, in terms of the potential, we're probably still in early days. Yeah. And interesting point you made about M2M and, and IoT. Do, people, do you think people are now distinguishing the difference between the two? Because um, I guess that's one of the, the challenges is it's a very uh, jar, it's a jargon term uh, and sometimes maybe the, the real opportunity here could be lost in the, in the, in the tech, uh, in the actual term itself. Yes, I think uh, that's right. I mean, the M2M always sounded a little bit techy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think perhaps IoT or Internet of Things sounds a little bit less techy. Mm -hmm. My feeling though is that probably both terms will disappear within the next uh, couple of years or so. Um, I mean, I remember saying uh, two, three years ago that one of the trends of M2M is that the term will disappear. Um, and it, it is now. It's being replaced by uh, IoT. I think though that it's, um, it's all to do with uh, the uh, adopter community, the business community, um, uh, looking at the issues, looking at how to uh, use the technologies for their benefit. And I think that then make, moves it around from being uh, not so much a sort of internet related thing as a business related thing. So I think that uh, it's all part of that move. And that's very good because it means that uh, actually we're moving into a more mature environment where the, uh, the user community is much more uh, in control, if you like, of what's going on. And they haven't been up to now. They've been very much sold to up to now. Yeah. And so where do you see the most opportunity? You know, we're obviously into their business, we're covering the, the, the different verticals, and right. we're here today looking at the retail space, but where do you see the kind of most opportunity in those, or early progress perhaps, manufacturing being mentioned as one, obviously doing a lot in Germany in particular. Right. Um, what sectors do you see as kind of leading this wave, if you like? Well, so all of the sectors are leading in different ways and at different times for uh, different reasons. The transport sector has been the one that uh, really uh, started the, uh, the whole thing off, if you like. But the energy sector is also moving along. But there's a lot of interest now behind manufacturing and the opportunities in, uh, in manufacturing. Um, and that's been uh, partly uh, you know, raised by the, the industrial internet idea. Um, and um, I think that you know, it, it's like um, uh, suddenly, if you like, the um, awareness of uh, what you can do with uh, the internet and connecting it to uh, assets in the manufacturing environment has struck a chord and uh, people are now developing their strategies in that area and, and moving forward. So I think there's a tremendous a lot of uh, opportunity and uh, talk uh, right now in the manufacturing space. I think actually the, uh, the retail space is also a very interesting one at the moment. There's a lot going on in, in retail. 
Um, I think that uh, retail is a particularly challenging environment at the moment, and IoT has a lot, to a lot of a, a part to play in in helping uh, the uh, the market players in that sector move forward as well. So yeah, I think there's a lot going on in, in every sector, but it's a little bit different. Yeah. yeah. So, so what do you see as the challenges going ahead then? You know, we, we've seen a lot already on, on privacy and security, um, having the right people to kind of um, interrogate the data and make sense of it, uh, as just a few examples. And then also it brings you to kind of the culture issue too, you know, have you got the right people to embrace that kind of innovation? Um, I mean, that's only what we've seen. Does that kind of fit with what you see as, uh, as barriers to adoption? Do you see anything else coming up and on the horizon? Well, uh, so those sorts of barriers are uh, more appropriate for some sectors than others. So, for example, retail. Uh, uh, people don't like to be steered, they don't like to be uh, controlled in any, in any way. So there's a concern about uh, using data from your previous purchases and so forth for um, you know, potentially nefarious purposes, shall we say. <laughs> we don't really know what purposes, but, uh, but uh, there's always a concern that that might be the case. And uh, there's also concerns in the healthcare sector, for example, uh, that uh, health records might be um, uh, misinterpreted, shall we say, and there's a lot of privacy associated with, uh, with healthcare. But in some areas, other areas like industrial, um, I mean, I don't think the average consumer is terribly interested in what happens in the uh, manufacturing sector. It's very much big industry. It's uh, very much uh, large assets and uh, large movements and things. So it's a very different sort of form of uh, activity. I mean, clearly there's the um, opportunity for uh, industrial espionage and stuff like that. So perhaps the threats are somewhat different yeah. in, uh, in that space. So I think that there's, there's always a concern. Once you connect something, there's always a concern that uh, somebody might misuse the information that comes out of it. But we've just got to get to grips with that because uh, it's another dimension of, uh, of progress, if you like. There's the, 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 the positives of connecting things for all of the things that you want to use it for. And then there's the potential negatives that come with that as well. And we just got to get to grips with that in each of these sectors. And we have to deal with it in a different way. Yeah. Robin, really appreciate your time today. I know you're speaking later, so good luck with that. I'm sure I'll see you around the next couple of days. So have a yeah, good rest of the day. That's great. And uh, thanks for you to watching.